so we don't have you know yeah. because I mean think about it most of our factories are 60 70 vans yeah. bringing in uh, people on a daily basis you know dozens and dozens of buses <laughs> then every time there's a power crisis generators have to kick in to keep thousands of machines running so if you don't have that uh, your own power supply and or your own fuel supply you're in, in you're in pretty much uh, pretty much yeah. screwed yes <laughs> yeah yes so we have been able to do that and another really um, interesting thing that has happened is one thing is with social media um, information has become more democratized right. right so the knowledge of what's going on people understand it a lot better who plays what role in the economy for right. example because if you take what happened during the covid lockdown you know the apparel sector yes, were yes. seen as the pariahs who came and infected everybody and were killing true, people true. off and you know <laughs> yes. forcing people yes. to come into work which are a load of cock but yeah. Um, at the end of the day, that was the sentiment at that time. Right. But suddenly, that whole thing has changed into being a very positive scenario for us right now. And I don't, I, you know, I'm not trying to be, um, uh, you know, diplomatic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Holier than thou. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, trying to just make light of it. Yeah. But, um, but the thing is that people understand how important it is for this industry to continue. Right. So we've had some interesting things happen. Like in the past, for example, if there was a protest and roads were blocked, right. everything would come to a grinding halt. Right. Apart from one or two locations that, that actually did happen, in most of the other locations where there were strikes or where there were protests or roads were blocked, if they saw vans coming with apparel industry boards on it, right. they would just path the road and say, Megulon, they are under you know, let these people go. Uh, they've got to get to work. These are the only people who are earning money for us. So wow. we have so been able to continue. Yeah. yeah. And that's a tremendous turnaround from being oh my God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, at, at, during that time, during the lockdown, um, several of the uh, of our team members would come and tell me, it's uh, ape school at one, um, ape la mange, school at one, under Right. Like wow. the kids were not allowed into school because the father or the mother was a member uh, was working in the apparel sector, right. so they weren't allowed. Doctors wouldn't see patients walking in in uniform. Wow. So if wow. they walk, they would they were trying to come. Uh, basically, they would take their uniforms off and then go and do what they had to do. Even to go to shop for uh, a shop for something like that. Yeah. Now it's like completely yeah. the the other side. So you know. Hero one day, zero the next day. That's that's just the way life is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is pretty much how HIV was treated, you know, back then. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, you know, you couldn't even be in the same room yeah. with, as an HIV yeah. patient. Now nobody even hears about it because it's 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 not cured, right. but it's sorted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sorted. Then I think yeah. the education of you know absolutely, uh, people yeah. get more knowledge of how things function. Yeah, absolutely, and I love how the tables have turned, you know. <laughs> but, but, but obviously, one, one, of the, one of the key things is what, what you just mentioned is the fact that sourcing out your own power, uh, yeah. which is what is which is actually making the the, the business run at the yeah, moment. Yeah, that's right. So that, that's that's a great achievement. I mean, I think this well, was also one of the I think the Minister of Power uh, for the first time they yeah. actually declared they gave licenses to private entities. Yeah, we have had. I mean, we have installed solar in almost all our roof, on all almost all our roofs. But the, the power agreement at the moment, if that goes into the green, then it disappears Correct. down a black hole and we never see <laughs> that the that's very again. True, yeah. So yeah. I think those are things that have to be changed and right. those are going to be very important if we are to invest in putting solar on the rest of our roofs and we can cover, you know, 40, 50 percent of our or maybe even more of our power usage if that is done. Uh, so those are things that have to be changed, uh, and I'm not here to tell, tell people how to do those things. Yeah, yeah although correct, I'd love correct. to. Uh, <laughs> I'll shut up. But <laughs> no, no. But I think a lot of people are actually feeling the same sentiments, although nobody is yeah. really talking about it. Mm. Because obviously we see the the problem at the problems that can be fixed. Yeah. Yeah, and easily fixed. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating to watch from the outside yeah. when you think you know this is so easily fixable. Right. It just needs a few people with. Um, Integrity and intelligence, we shall put. We, we shall yeah, get yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, also. Yeah. You get that. Uh, but get talking that about the industry, I think yeah, you know, what's yeah. important to understand right now is there are two factors. Mm -hmm. One is what's going on in Sri Lanka right now, Correct. and all the you know drama around uh, our daily existence. Um, that we are getting through, and I believe most of the apparel sector is somehow managing to get through that. The bigger thing that we have to start getting concerned about is that globally, you're starting to see a bit of a slowing down of the economy. Right. You're seeing a, uh, I, I would hate to call it a global recession, but it's certainly a go global slowing down mm -hmm. due to a multitude of factors. China shutting down, Ukraine, you know, uh, logistics issues, whatever. High inflation all around. So those things are happening. 
we are probably going to see a slowing down of growth in the industry over the last quarter or the first part of next year as we are seeing a little bit right now not of catastrophic levels but things could change very fast depending also on what's happening in Sri Lanka okay. because now at the moment I think most customers are comfortable with the fact that even though this is happening that the industry continues. That's great yeah. news, Sari. Yeah, it's interactive. <laughs> yeah. That's no, like the best uh, piece of news. Let's not get yeah, too yeah, carried yeah, away. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something that I'm very concerned about. Right. And that is something that we almost over communicate with our customers as to what's happening on a daily basis. Right. If there is anything of significance happens, we communicate and say, this has happened. Here's what we have done to mitigate this. Right. Don't worry, nothing is happening. We are going on. Because and the best. Their, probably their first reaction is to go into panic mode because the moment they hear anything about Sri Lanka. Yeah. And now, for example, if you go to, if you read the news, you would have to stop visiting half the countries in the world. That's yes. true. Because, you know, everything <laughs> is like burning down uh, true, true, in flames, true. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think that is something that you have to put in context. So, we have to be able to combat, combat that. Um, the concern that we have is one, obviously, if there is something complete, like, if there is like complete anarchy here, right. if there is complete breakdown in law and order and, you know, life as we know it yeah. changes overnight and it can do it. Yeah, of course. And we see so many examples around the world that can happen. Now, that is something that we have to be very, very careful about. Right. Because if that happens, the business will leave. Right. That will go. Because one, we won't be able to continue business. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the other side, obviously, there's going to be a tremendous amount of panic on course, the, on the side of the customers. The industry is, is I, I think, if you look at it aloof of all this, is not in a bad place. So what's the story about what we hear in the newspapers that most of uh, the industries are either moving out of Sri Lanka because they cannot actually cope up with what's going on or the orders that is coming into Sri Lanka, the, 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 the customers are sort of diverting it to Bangladesh and to other countries, what, what we would have usually got. I don't think there's a huge amount of that diversion taking place. There is some diversion taking place depending on who the customer is. Right. Also, I don't think there is a huge, like, di you know, divesting from Sri Lanka and moving elsewhere. Right. I think if organizations are expanding elsewhere, it's a part of their ongoing strategy of diversifying from Sri Lanka. Right. Because if you look at the industry in Sri Lanka, it's pretty mature. Yeah. It's been around yeah. for 30 plus yeah. years, almost 40 years it's been around. Right. And it has reached a point where now... Uh, one, we are a small island and, you know, there's only a finite amount of uh, growth that we can have here. Right. Um, and there are other factors that are coming into play now. For example, people are being very concerned about logistics. So, they are starting to base their manufacturing bases closer to the markets. Right. You know, near shore, on shore to markets. That right. is one thing that's happening. But if you look at what's happening to the existing operations, I don't think there is a down, uh, you know, downsizing of any of the operations. Right. I, I certainly haven't heard of anybody Absolutely. shutting down shop as such. Right. But there's certainly a divesting into other nations, other yeah. countries, other locations is as a part of a growth strategy. Is MAS also looking at, uh, you know, the African expansion? We are already in Africa. Yeah. We are already in Africa. We are in Jordan. We are in Haiti, Dominican Republic, India, Bangladesh, Indonesia, right. Vietnam. You know, a whole bunch of different locations were there, and that is not in any um, any Way because we are panicking about Sri Lanka and expand. Yeah. It's a part of the strategy. It's not the fact that you've place. shut down anything here and taken no, it over there. No, no, right, okay. it is not. I mean, right. I, I, we have downsized in certain places. Right. But that is more as a result of also how much money has been invested now and time and effort and intelligence has been invested in making the processes better. You are right. getting more productivity out of the same footprint. Yeah. Yeah. So your the investment that is going into those haven't slowed down, at least not to my knowledge. Okay, that's that's great. So in terms of the industry right now, now um, the way that you are ex explaining is is the fact that you are living in your own little bubble at the moment. Pretty much. Yeah. So because you as long as we are inside the office premises, as soon as you come back out, you have to get a gas. <laughs> exactly. You know, no no gas, no <laughs> petrol, no this, no that. It's like how you go yeah. to the cricket match. Yeah, exactly. You go to the cricket match, out and scream and think that the world is a beautiful place. Yeah. You walk out and then you have to walk. 15 kilometers because they're not took yeah, no took yeah, obviously. Yeah. That, that's I mean, especially yeah. if you win three in a row yeah. tonight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. of course, yeah, it's yeah. an absolute bubble. Yeah. But you come back, to the, you know, come back to earth you immediately. Come crashing down to reality <laughs> when you come home. Yeah. But in terms of the industry, I mean, this is of course 
you know, keeping our fingers crossed, it's great to know, uh, considering the fact that the apparel industry has always been one of the pillars that this country has actually stood on yeah. in terms of the foreign remittance mm. uh, that is to coming into this country. Um, now, this, of course, is definitely helping mm. the country where we are searching for foreign mm. remittance. Mm. Um, is there a way that the apparel industry has sort of lined up to increase the request that is needed by the country or are you guys just basically going ahead with your plans? No, I think there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, give and take here. You right. can't, uh, one is, um, you can't watch everything that's going on here and then say, no, I don't want to bring my money here. Sure. I'm going to keep it all outside. No, right. there's, that, that's not happening. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that that is happening in certain areas, but uh, by and large, the money is following the same channels that it followed before. Right. And whatever that whatever measures have been taken in terms of protecting cash for organizations is done as a part of a strategy of in a crisis situation. Right. The world is facing a crisis. Sri Lanka is facing a crisis, and there is a certain amount of protection that you need to do to ensure the continuity yeah. of business. You have to insulate uh, yourselves against. You Absolutely, know, yeah. because now, say for example, MAS employs a hundred thousand people. Right. Yeah. If you take a hundred thousand people, you are talking about five, six hundred thousand people that Dependent on depend them. Yes. Yeah. on them, and then there is a wider economy created. About another 500, 600,000. Right. Uh, maybe not so many, but another two, 300,000 people, transport agents, shops, service providers, cleaners, gardeners, you know, everybody right. there. There are, there's another economy created. So you have to ensure the, the continuity of your business right. as well. Right. So you can't bring, uh, you know, all your cash and then throw it into the government coffers and yeah. say, here, here, you know, the we brought the money <laughs> and came. Because anyway, the, the kind of mismanagement that we have seen, would you give your money to them? That's true. <laughs> But, Sarin, is there more pressure from the government on your organization to actually, you know... Or the industry, yeah. or the industry per se. Uh, no, I don't think there's pressure as such. There's more requests made to make sure that the money is coming through. But so far, there hasn't been any undue pressure put on us. Okay. Um, and uh, of course, the, the pressure is where you have to um, have access to your money when it comes in, yeah. right. when you have to use it. Because right. we buy, uh, you know, 50% or more of our raw material is uh, bought from overseas so we need to pay our creditors yeah. you know are they, uh, you know so we need Absolutely. the money yeah, I mean, that. That, that, so that i'm sure it must be a three month process where you, you know make payments or whatever I yeah mean, like normal corporates have. normal yeah. but but you need to ensure the flow of it right you need to and you can't be delaying because then they stop your credit terms yeah. especially at a time like this when the world is seeing that sri lanka is in deep shit um, <laughs> technical term yeah, yeah, yeah of course it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's true yeah, yeah. Uh, deep, deep shit. <laughs> very, very deep shit. <laughs> uh, the, if you are a businessman, doing, if you are a service provider from outside, if you were, say, a supplier from outside, wouldn't you want to ensure that your cash was safe? Of course. Would you want to send hundreds of thousands of dollars into a country like this, right. knowing that even if the company you're working with is secure, money is not coming out of the country because the country doesn't have money. Right. It's getting sucked up for other things. So yeah. I think that is the danger that we are facing right now. Uh, the one positive in all this is that the local supply chain, the local fabric base, for example, has developed tremendously over the last few years. Right. And there are several companies, I don't want to mention names because that could impact stock market movement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want yeah. to be yeah. hammered yeah. for insider <laughs> trading. But, uh, <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but the local supply chain is actually doing quite well. Wow, I, I didn't yeah. re even realize that, uh, you know, that yeah, the local that market, yes. like what percentage of the, the requirement does the local market supply? So I think it depends a lot from customer to customer, right. uh, but a customer that I work with uh, yeah, intimately and have knowledge of is yeah. doing almost 50% of their supply chain, uh, uh, supply in Sri Lanka. Yeah. That's incredible By and great news incredible, actually. Incredible, <laughs> incredible, very good news, yeah. very good news. And that shows the maturity of Sri Lanka as a destination. Yeah. Now, if you can just not screw the rest of it up, <laughs> right. yeah. we'd be really well poised to yeah. do so many things and not just just the apparel sector guys yeah, you know absolutely. we are talking about this country has so much potential because it seems like outside what we have seen governing the country yeah. there are some very smart people in this country who are doing really great things on the front on business fronts right we are competing globally and winning right we are competing globally and rubbing shoulders yeah. with the best in the world and holding our own but That's we can't run a, uh, but it doesn't seem like the people who should know how to run a country know how to run a tea shop yeah, you know, so the, the, the basic disciplines yeah. of running a business yeah. are completely ignored. 
Either yeah. rogues or mutts. Yeah. <laughs> you have to you have to belong to one, one of the one yeah. camp or the other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? <laughs> but getting into all that as we move on, there's lots of you obviously want to talk about. But in terms of now obviously um, you deal with the banking instruments very often because of uh, the the inward remittance and of course. Now, considering the fact that our banks have been downgraded, mm -hmm. has that actually affected your customers and your clients? Is there like a little you know, little dark cloud. Yeah, there has been some concern and we have had to give assurances. Right. And also then what happens is the customers that we work with give assurances to the supply chain also. Right. And say, no, these guys' cash flow is, is good. They, are, I mean, they don't really, uh, they don't really underwrite the payments, but yeah. they certainly give assurances that it happens. Also, you know, this business is about relationships. Right. And the, the group I work for has very, very strong belief in the strength of relationships. Right. So all the relationships don't is not just with partners. Yeah. It's with your supply chain also. True, true. You have very I have you many friends in your yeah, business. And you can't <laughs> grow a business yeah. without having that really deep uh, bond. bond. Yeah. Because you do it together. Yeah. You know, all the cliches or you know. <laughs> yeah. so but, that, but it really true. works. It's, it's, true. True. it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we all, I mean, living in Colombo or you know, anywhere, in, uh, anywhere in Sri Lanka, you'll have someone at MAS. <laughs> you'll know, not someone, you'll know many, many people at MAS because that's yeah, how big, big it is. It's a big, know? Organ, big yeah. It's a pretty big ecosystem. It's actually yeah. created yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, so basically, in terms, of, um, in, in terms of you opening up LCs, mm -hmm. clearly there is no problem with you opening up LCs because of your relationship. Right. Quite so far, contrary yeah. <laughs> to what we are facing as a country, opening up LCs because our relationship is so bad. Yeah. So and so the it boils down to relationship right. then. It really does, doesn't we, it? We have had some challenges <laughs> with LCs, but uh, yeah. by and large, we have been able to continue our business right. without disruption. That's excellent. I mean, lots so of also. I mean, yeah. the country, country, it reflects on your balance sheet. Right? Yes, yes. If the country yeah. doesn't have money. How can they open LCs? Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, that's, that's true. And again, yeah. it boils down to the relationship. So nobody's going. Are they going to trust you and say we'll pay you in three months? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? No, but the thing is, that the kind of relationship that you have might they might even allow that. I mean, if your, you know, I mean, if your suppliers Absolutely. feel that, you know what, yeah. this, we've been doing this for 30 yeah. years, you know, yeah. they've never, never shortchanged yeah. us yeah. once or been delayed once. Yeah. This time we understand. So this is why it boils down to relationship. Obviously, as a country, the, the entity, we haven't cultivated relationships like that. Even the the relationships that we've had for a long time, like Japan, for instance, we've we managed to piss, them piss off. all over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And now we are wondering what happened. Yeah. We Come burned on, the bridge you know? and we want them to build it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but something else that... Uh, burned something the railway line. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That LRP is what really, yeah. you know, made yeah. <laughs> was just the... Absolutely, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, I feel. You know? No, you know, it, it's very, very simple in an economy or in an in a environment where you make money off commissions, yeah. you wouldn't want any free thing. That's Certainly true. Not. <laughs> That's That's the money true. to be made in something free. That is so true. <laughs> but uh, Sarinda, something very important that I want to ask you is because, you know, like you said, you em employ 100,000 people. Well, the group and, does. Yeah, yeah, the group. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, wh what's going on is a dark cloud for everyone. Yes. How is like the group yeah try like uh, is there counseling yes is there like you know some kind of support network that you put in place you know to just because i'm sure not the parents or the the siblings of whoever works for you they might be having lots of other issues mm -hmm. at home issues, yeah How and we saw it more during the lockdown where people yeah. were locked up at home and you yeah. know they couldn't get out yeah. um, so one thing that we have always had is a very very strong network of hr connectivity with our people right you no know, and then in the last i would say probably 10 years or more, we've started including several counsellors on our uh, panels. That's great. So every plant will have a counsellor or two counsellors depending on the number of people. Wow. And they are very accessible and they also have access to, say for example, the police, legal advice, medical advice, whatever it may be, they have the network that they can connect to. Right. On the area of mental, uh, mental health, we've been spending a lot of time on that with programs not just having counselors there, but we also do programs like Let's Talk, a program called Let's Talk, where we have mentors or, or, co or people who um, are trained right. to listen. Right. So that <coughs> they are, their names are publicized, they are, they, are, right. they are given visibility in the organization, and then what we do is um, you know, keep coaching them and making sure that they know how to handle situations and what needs to be escalated to a counselor or, right, or right, beyond. Right. Um, so that we have been doing for a long time and that has been something that uh, has a fair amount of success. But the, the unfortunate thing is, um, 
mental health in this country is still looked at as a bit of a taboo. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But Absolutely I'm so, I'm, yes. yeah, but I'm so, Anu, one thing we are seeing now again with the, uh, with the democratization of information yeah. that social media has yeah. done yes. is, this has become a mainstream topic. Yeah. Actually, right. lot, lot more now, people are talking exactly. about it. Exactly. If somebody said that you were going to cycle, I'm going to piss you. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to piss you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, it it's actually a taboo subject to even bring up the word psychologist yeah. or even exactly. a psychiatrist or whatever it is. And I can quite proudly say I have been going to one for over 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> Would you blame him? <laughs> But no, it's you know, I'm, I'm making light of it, yeah. but, no, yeah, but it's very, very important, you know. Certainly made a massive impact in my life, right? And I am very, very open to talking about how it helped me and where I was right. in my life when, when I had to go to a council. So, right. I think as soon as leaders of organizations by virtue of the fact that you are a leader of that organization starts talking about it and making the subject mainstream right the taboo comes crashing down around you yeah. tell them it's a normal thing to do it is normal yeah, right? yeah exactly i mean if you have toothache what the hell are you going to do yeah <laughs> you're going to hide and say nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> same thing no <laughs> it's another part of your body it's yeah. another part of the machine that's and, all and it needs treatment especially exactly. living in a country like this especially in now? situations like this yeah i mean i'm sure being patriarchs you know a lo lo lot of them out there we should all all men should be now right now bottling all of this angst within themselves mm -hmm. And you know, it, it has a ripple effect on your uh, spouses, your children, and you, nobody's talking about it. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Everybody is feeling a massive amount of pressure right now. Yeah. And very few people, it's manifesting itself in various other ways. Yeah. You know, you're screaming at the dog and shouting at the cat and um, shouting at the children or whatever yeah. it may True. be. But I think it's very important that we all understand that we are facing something that is very, very unfortunate and yeah. that is have, has a massive negative impact on everybody. Absolutely. So going back to your question, yeah. we have created a network of communication where any issue like that is brought up. Then the other thing that we do, Anu, is that we look at what are the main issues. And here, I, you know, one thing that I always have loved, don't laugh at me, right? <laughs> Ma Maslow's hierarchy yes. needs that pyramid. Yes. Every bloody thing you do can go into that pyramid. You <laughs> yes, can fit yes. it somewhere in there, right? <laughs> Everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you look at that, I yeah. think the base needs right now yeah. is security, yeah. food, yeah. medicine, children's education. Yeah. Those are the things that people are really worrying about. Right. Right. Whatever we can do as an organization across the boards, we have been doing in those spaces. Sure. We have been getting um, Wholesalers to come and give like do like pullers in the oh, wow. this thing at wholesale prices so right. people can s save 15 20 percent in some cases. Right now, you know what the supermarkets are marking up. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, you <laughs> always knew that, yeah, yes, yes. even more now, some are even more, you know. <laughs> right? Uh, so, if you if you look at what we can do as an organization when you have the purchasing power behind a thousand people. You can then go and negotiate terms that an individual can't go and negotiate. That's so true. what we are doing is we are negotiating with people to serve, provide services to make Bad lives services. easier, yeah. Yeah. Of, of, our, uh, of our people. And then we are also providing like, you know, tuition class services, for example, during the whole levels. Um, we've had transportation services for kids to go to the, for the yeah. exams. Yeah. Uh, some of our plants provided uh, spaces to do. Uh, for them to study because there was no right. lights at that time, right. so they could come into our plants and we'll have the lights on and you know have comfort for them, like cream yeah. and biscuits and that yeah. kind of yeah. stuff, and let them study. Um, some even had tutors, you know, helping them. So that kind of stuff is being done across the board. Yeah, Medi uh, medicine-wise, anything. Medicine-wise, also we have been able to tie up with certain you know parties that import right. this stuff and bring stuff specially okay. for what is regularly required. What is regularly required. But not on a on a massive scale. That is right. a bit of a tricky space to go into. Right. Okay. So you know, because of prescriptions and you know non-prescription yeah, drugs, yeah. prescription drugs, it it's becomes a bit complicated. Legal, is it too, but yeah. certainly providing people with the you know kind of peace of mind to know that there is going to be food on the table is is something that we have been working on because right. I think that's a that's a big concern. Yeah. 
The other thing is that, um, like say during during COVID, where people couldn't even go out, some of these people didn't have access to even fresh water. So yeah. we were distributing water to all these people, right. and we are talking about you know in certain locations, rural locations, hundreds of people in very rural rural areas. So that is something that see you I mean as a, as an organization clearly it's this ecosystem that you've built yes you're running your own little country pretty much <laughs> and, and that side better than must be done out <laughs> that yeah. that was basically taking me to the next question <laughs> no I'm telling you consider the fact that you I mean w your organization is one of many which is actually doing this for their for their staff and so on and so forth so why is it difficult for some of the key business leaders to step up and say listen this is not the way to go about it and maybe you've done it they I have, don't, no, yeah I, I, you know if you if you look at across the boards the leaders that have spoken up starting with uh, you know our chairman right who's spoken up and said proper governance and answerability is required we need to be you know there needs to be answerability to what's going on here and and transparency is one, one's happening and those calls have been made well, what, like shouting at a brick wall no? so what's come <laughs> out of that sorry i know, I've, I've seen well i think uh, i mean uh, if, you, if you see what has hap happened Shep, over the last um, what two three months yeah. now right it's almost three months since the Aragalia started right? yeah it was the catalyst for a lot of this I think a hell of a lot of credit has to go to all those kids who started that right. because if you look at what we have achieved and people can criticize them yeah of course you can criticize anything right and <laughs> yes. that's a that's a national pastime we like love to criticize so um, if you look at the you know negatives yeah there are a few things that I got okay there was an unfortunate thing that happened today where the IMF people couldn't come in yeah no, yes. no. yesterday and, and yeah the, and, and, and the they did not know etc yeah. yeah fair enough you know right so there are things that, that that happened but they have managed to get rid of an extremely corrupt central bank um, uh, management stuff <laughs> right we we'll right. put it that way yeah, right yes. right, right. Uh, then they got rid of a cabinet yeah they got rid of a prime it's minister. amazing nobody else has done this. exactly so you know the, a, a prime minister had to step down of course he's proxy in power right now but so right <laughs> so he didn't really step down but, uh, but be that as it may um, I'm, I'm uh, that's okay. <laughs> on live TV. <laughs> and we, we can't go back and edit it. It's already gone now. Damn it. Yeah. If it's a British TV, people will say, don't. <laughs> 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 Just do yoga. <laughs> uh, no, it's not yoga. <laughs> always a treat. Always. So go on, carry on. I'm just saying, we're getting into the Aragali, of course. I mean. Yeah, so going back to the Aragali, I think, you know, massive, massive kudos to those kids who started it and for everybody who has been supporting, either physically by being there or in whatever way possible. Not everybody goes and stands there and uh, jumps up and down, but... Uh, and it's there, not a requirement. A yeah, no, it's not. not but yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think there is a lot of behind-the-scenes support that has happened right. by individuals that, uh, you know, uh, across the uh, economic uh, strata in Absolutely. this country that From have helped in yeah. whatever way possible. Even sending a book to for them to read or whatever yeah. it is to keep that going. Yeah. I mean, there is a it's mini library really created there. Absolutely, well. yeah. yeah. So then art created. Yeah. It has created a culture of itself. I think it's an example for the world. Right. And massive respect there. So let's not forget what has happened. There's more to do. The main issue here is that the leader himself right. is dysfunctional. Yeah. For, for the lack of a better word. So would so you, would you? I mean, obviously, being in the industry for such a long time, being a prominent uh, uh, figurehead business person, so to say, right, for a long time, um, would you oh, basically? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask the question, sir. <laughs> you do this all the time. Halfway down, I forget the question. <laughs> not what it implies. <laughs> <laughs> not, not what the question tries to say. The question, okay, right? Okay. Yeah. I give up. <laughs> But uh, yeah. seriously, would you actually put the entire onus on the president as to where we are right now? Because everybody wants him to go, right? That was the call for him to go. Everybody around him has sort of, you know, left. But still he is there, he's yeah. holding on, he's saying, listen, he doesn't want to leave as a failed president, yeah. right? But <laughs> <laughs> I think that point is that moved right now. It's done and done. So would you know, actually put it on him? horse has bolted past him. <laughs> uh, yes, because this is an all-powerful executive president. Right. It's, you know, it, the executive presidency was given more muscle under his tenure. 
Right. Yeah, without a doubt. And the twentieth amendment. The 20th amendment, 20th amendment, amendment in, gave him more muscle to run over the country. So then he should have taken control of what was going on. You can't say that the governor of the central bank should have known better. I mean, he <laughs> should have known that. <laughs> right, right. Um, so you have to you have to look at what the what's happening around you. There are certain now. Say for example, I can only draw parallels between business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I mean that's the best way to look at it. Exactly. Really. So you look at your long term plan and you see crisis on the horizon. Right. What is the first thing you start doing? You start watching your expenditure. Right. You start watching and spending money only one what is absolutely essential to ensure the survival of your company if you are going to be bankrupt. Right. You don't go and put up bloody cafeteria and <laughs> build a park and a children's park and a zoo and a, you know, monkey <laughs> train and something else. You don't do that. Mm. But what was happening? We were busting up money left, right and center on expenditure that could have been easily deferred had it not been this frenzy to make money as soon as possible through the shit in the pan. Right. That was one. And I think, um, so, so if you had a proper structure of leadership, proper governance, those things would have been caught and controls would have been put in place, yeah. first and foremost. And that is what's important. In any business, yeah. Yeah. the leader is, has the buck stops with that leader. Yeah, yeah. true. Right? Or you, you make sure that there are checks and balances in place so that the lead, it's not just up exactly. to one person. You know? yeah. Yeah. If the company was budgeting or, or looking at a uh, uh, horizon of 12, uh, 12 months, and we were going to make a loss. Yeah. What do you think would have happened to me as a CEO of the organization if I went and bought a brand new car and you know <laughs> uh, took a few first class flights around the world and stayed at a five, five star hotel? My ass would have been on a sling out of there before I before you came back. Before I, b b you know, started the car. Yeah. Right? I mean, history, yeah, true, because true. you don't allow that to happen. Right. I remember a time when uh, when we were you know. Uh, going through a really tough patch at um, uh, at uh, um, not just MAs, I think 2008 to 2009 during the global oh, uh, right. financial yeah, crisis, so no, yeah, yeah. the kind of austerity measures that we took as an organization, right. we took bulbs out of our lighting system to reduce our cost of electricity. So where we had these lines of tube lights, yeah. every other light was taken out. Right. And because that was just enough for us to get by. Right. So we used to do the Visnok cases of Visnok. Uh, <laughs> all that was done because we <coughs> saw it Sorry. coming and we acted. You don't see it coming and then laugh on you know global <laughs> TV saying, ah, neon lights are on. <laughs> no, but everything looks good. Yeah. You know, right now. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, so, so you can have everything looking good on the outside, the inside the rotten to the core. So you can't excuse that kind of mismanagement and that is that is i think uh, you know the saddest part about this is this wasn't something you do wake up in the morning bankrupt yeah it happens yeah. over a period of time you Absolutely. can see it happening right it's like watching a train wreck in slow motion and not getting out of the way <laughs> yeah right. that's true right and making sure you're sitting comfortable yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the train. Yeah. pretty much like uh, austin powers yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know whether you recall the image. Shouting the It's coming in slow motion out of the way. <laughs> yeah, but that, that is what it is, right? But, uh, sorry, I mean, to you know, actually ask a serious question now. Which is very difficult. <laughs> these, all this wasn't serious, no, 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 It was, it was. I wish this go off air <laughs> No, but you know, I mean, what I'm sure the, the business community has already like thought of uh, a way forward out of this you know uh, do you have a theory in mind or you know see there's all the theories you can do for to keep your business going and and, and get out of this yeah. no, I'm, I'm we, for, the country, for the country yeah we have all kinds of these <laughs> theories that we have yeah. but ultimately our theories come to nothing if uh, you yeah, know we are not in uh, positions to do that no and i'm certainly not angling for any bloody government true, position true. that's the last thing i, I, I would want to do but I, I think we have a lot of smart people in the opposition and even one or two in the government uh, sure. uh, Maybe uh, half, maybe. <laughs> um, but we, the, certainly, there are people in the in the political system of our country that are extremely intelligent. Yes. But we need to make sure that the right people are in the right place. And in a time like this, in a time like this, even bringing people from the business sector, like I, I don't want to name people, like yeah. you know, say senior leaders from my organization True. who have proved yeah. that they have built two billion dollar companies, two and a half, three billion dollar yeah. companies, yeah. they have single, you know, with their vision they have been able to do that. Right. 
get them to come and assist here. Get well, us. We have so much expertise in those areas. We have some of the smartest IT people around. So, some, you know, from building businesses to running businesses to the tourism sector to whatever. There are so many intelligent people who are just kept on the periphery. If you are, and then if you are brought into a committee, it's a committee of about 40 people. Yeah. Then. And I've, I've, I've actually been seen some of these committees yeah. in action mm. and uh, it's very difficult to get a word yeah. in edgeways and even no if point. you de do, it's, it's considered at best. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and they do exactly yeah, what they want yeah, to yeah, anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. But Sari, can you actually have, can you, can you run a successful business in a failing economy? It's yeah. what we're having right now. To a level you can, if you can stay aloof of what's going on, but it's going to catch up with you at some point because, okay, let's see another massive issue that we're having right now. We have a huge drain of brains yeah. Yeah. leave in this country. Right. Right. And it's not just people going to, you know, work in uh, blue collar jobs in the Middle East. No. We are seeing intelligent, educated, uh, um, with all due respect to everybody going to the Middle East, I'm not calling them unintelligent, right. but what I'm saying is experienced middle management, senior management, yeah. looking out for opportunities elsewhere because what would you do if you had two or three kids um, that you had to put through university and you know or put through school or educate them or uh, in some manner or provide you know food right on a regular basis yeah. do you and your salary it has now yeah. devalued by x amount and it it's like paper yeah you know yeah, what do much. you do yeah how do you survive so there will there is a point that has come already and we are seeing people leaving in chunks it's not one or two people leaving these are like 10, 15 people leaving at a time right. and they are going all over the place because there are now opportunities being created in Canada, in, in the UK, yeah. all over the place, New Zealand, everyone is going all over the place. Absolutely. So that to me is the, the most scary thing because even if the economy comes back to uh, you know, a relative level of normalcy yeah. and I hope it will, right. I'm optimistic it will. Yeah. Right. There might not be people to run Who's businesses? going to run the businesses? Yeah. Then what do we do? Yeah. So actually, this is a fantastic opportunity for you know the Western world because I mean, population prediction says by 2050, you know, like even China is going to half its population. Mm. We're going to come down mm. to about 700 million and be yeah. the third largest population mm. in the world. India, Nigeria, and China. That's the order, right? So anyway, they were looking at uh, trying to get uh, you know people. people. So this is like an ideal opportunity when like especially a, a country with a talented, intelligent, intelligent people collapses. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. You are getting them at a cut rate too. Yeah. yeah. Because you are panicking, right? Yeah. So you know, obviously, these opportunities going to be actually increase in the coming years because I mean, these are UN predictions that I'm yeah. talking about. And obviously, now, if you make Harit Adagar thing like the base and whatever soon, so, so it, like you said, that ship also would sail away. And you know, yeah. it will be too far, too late. Then how do you rebuild? Even if you have the opportunity to rebuild without people, it's going to be impossible. Be left with all buggers like me. <laughs> so, uh, not that I'm, we are complaining because we are just going to, you know, <laughs> join, the, <laughs> join the, join the, join the, already there. <laughs> we just look a little different. <laughs> No, but what I'm trying no, to yeah, say, it's, it's a, a, you know, we're making light of a very, very serious yeah. subject and something that is really bothering me and makes me very sad that we can't, in, you know, in spite of everything that you try to do, we can't keep these people back. Right. It's very, very difficult. And what do you do, right? But when some you you try to sell somebody something and say, okay, you no no machan stay, no yeah. no no you better stay. There's a good yeah. career path for you. Uh, you can't say that anymore. Them. You can't yeah. you can't you can't yeah. sell that ticket anymore. No, you can sell the career path ticket because yeah. that's true. Because there yeah. is development. Yes. I mean, they can yeah. go from here to another country or something in the future. But yeah. you right. can't guarantee something. When right. they have bird in the hand versus two in the bush, no, the yeah. uh, bird yeah. is there. Right. Um, <laughs> is it no? Um, you can't, especially in this now. Last interview we're ever going to have. With you. Oh God. Yeah, it's all that bloody. No, 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 no. I was waiting for you to finish that statement. <laughs> Thank God we so. don't have a license to lose. You know? <laughs> I never had it to you. So <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. it's very difficult to show people. A future when you don't know whether you have a future. Yes, when you don't know whether any of us have a future. Yes. How do you get out of this? Is there a way out of this? I mean, yeah, there need some, you know, a couple of tough decisions will have to be taken by uh, yeah. a government that is committed to actually 
doing something. What tough decisions are we talking about? I mean, th- every day we, we spoke about this before the show started. Every day we wake up in the morning, we're like, oh my God, what's going to go happen today? Yeah. What's going to go wrong today? It's yeah. Every day is <laughs> a survival. Yeah. But I, I think if you look at it again from a corporate point of view, right? If you look at expenditure versus income, the first thing you need to try and do is try and balance that out. There is zero income. Well, there's no, I mean, even, 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 exactly. even so leading now, up to this. Yeah, yeah. even leading up yeah. to this. That's yeah. the case now. Right. I mean, in, a, in a situation where your expenditure is X, 10X, right. and yeah. your income is 2X, right. you don't want to cut, uh, cut taxes and do all kinds of yeah. stupid things like that yeah. right. and make that 15X and this 1X. No? Right. Yeah. right. Common sense is yeah. you have to try and balance your payments with your, uh, with your, um, income. With your income. income. Yeah, of course. Right? But common sense clearly is yeah. not very common, especially in Devanna. <laughs> because, um, <laughs> I mean, they are, when you think of the kind of decision making there, they are just basically hoodwinking people to believe yeah. that they are in this false state of security, security you know? till yeah. the next election. Right. That's Absolutely. it. It's just about pro- pro- prolonging your yeah. stay in power and yes. then making as much as you can while, you, while you're about it. This is what we actually heard. I mean, we had a few politicians who came on the show and they were yeah. very open about it. Hmm. When they come into power, they only it's work for the first two years. It's all about, yeah, exactly. Le- the remaining three years is working it's about for the next election. election. Yeah. For the next election. Yeah. Yeah. So that system is fundamentally flawed. And that will always, well, as long as we have that kind of system, I'm not a big fan of democracy as we have it yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. No, That's a different topic. It is democracy, but it doesn't work for us. Yeah, yeah, and you know, uh, the you can have dictatorships, you can have benevolent dictatorships, you can have all kinds of different models. But say, even in this soci- socio-democratic model that we have, socialist, democratic, something, you know, yeah, whatever, I mean, but the our model socialist that, part doesn't really work. Does it, it doesn't because it yeah. buries everything yeah. else. The, yeah. the, it buries businesses, it buries everything else because when we are earning 10, we have spent 20. Yeah. Right. Because you are trying to appease your voters. I mean, look at all the government enterprises. You walk into those organizations and see how many people are actually working. That's true. <laughs> and yeah. now, now, now they have, now they're basically working from home. Yeah. When they're not, when, when we have problem from of working home. from yeah. work, yeah. right? Yeah. They're working from home is a different story. I have no idea how that's going to work. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I mean, it no, it might be better because they won't come and you know, yeah, up. At least you're not yeah, consuming right. you know, energy in office. Exactly. Fridays, it's off. Yeah. So it's Correct. like a four day week. Yeah. But now the, 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 the Aragalia is requesting for all 225 to go. Right? I mean, is that a practical So I, I think we had to be a little, um, uh, you know, I'm not here to make political commentary or, yeah. or decision, sure. but my view is you have to be a little objective about what can be achieved and what can't be of achieved. Of course. Right. You can chase all and then you're going to have an election and they'll all come back again. Absolutely. Right. You know, so what are you going to do? Chase them out and then what's your solution? But who's going to come into power? That is right. one. Yeah. The other thing is, you, you, I think more than chasing out the people, um, who are there because even governance, being in government, uh, requires a certain amount of experience. So some people yeah. are experienced and there are in, in that 225, there are people who can work. Right. You know, e- and I have absolutely no problem with somebody stealing. You if they steal 25%. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> the problem is, yeah. uh, that's, that's not how it should happen. Right. You know, but at least you know. At all. Yeah, yeah, best, case, best case scenario. Best case scenario. <laughs> right, okay. But <laughs> calm down. I'm calm. Ten minutes more, you got this. Don't know if they have your bloody van outside. But they, they don't have fuel. No fuel. No, that's it. How like that? That's Tamil Nadu. But if you, if what's important is transparency of decision making, transparency of decision making and answerability. Right. Those two have to be brought in. And then, and you can't have one person who's lording it over everything. The governance should be given to the parliament. President can be a figurehead like we have had in the past. Yes, and, of you know, course. Enjoy an uh, occasional horse ride or something yeah. like that. Or at present. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Or at present. Yeah, exactly, figurehead. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, and I think it's what's really important is that a clear structure of governance and a clear answerability structure. Yeah. Judiciary needs to be muscled up and given independence. And that answerability and transparency needs to be there, Shaq. And I think that is really, really important in government right now, especially in a, at a time where there is so much mistrust. Yeah. yeah and there is complete lack of credibility. 
That is so in true. the political system that yeah. we have right, right. now. None so of us we actually have exactly. any faith in yeah. you know, whatever is even said yeah. on a daily basis. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. there are, I'm not going to name politicians here, but there are yeah. one or two are close, very, very close friends of mine, and I know one, for example, is dead honest and very committed. But then yeah. you can't have people like that seated on the periphery. They have to yeah. be in governance and running things. Right. You right. know, so I think it's really important that we make sure that the right we vote the right people in that to start with which is a very difficult one yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's, very it's difficult. difficult to vote the right people in when you've got the same clan coming in over no, I, I, I strongly thing. feel that you know i if i had a uh, if i had a um, um, clear uh, this mandate to put some rules in i'd say minimum education qualification disclose all your assets disclose yeah. all your very business simple. dealings and and you know periodically you have to be audited right I, that's the only thing you can put some checks and measures. I mean, the declaration of assets is already there. It's already there. I mean, nobody adheres to it. 16 people yeah. in parliament. Out of 225, have yeah. declared the assets. You know? It right. is absolutely ridiculous how that has been ignored mm. when it's a legal requirement. And not just for the parliament, for anyone in public service. It's, it's a matter yeah, exactly. if, yeah, right. if you are in Because otherwise, what's to stop you? from gaining un undue advantage. Right. It's like we mentioned earlier about insider trading, you know, but we, mm. we wouldn't do that because mm. we know our our name mm. matters to us, you know, to, at least to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of people <laughs> there outside also who really don't give a damn yeah, about, give a toss about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about it. But another thing that I, I felt uh, strongly is that this tussle between you know, Adhikarne, Vivastha, the executive, right? Mm. Who has precedence can it has to be clearly established with an amendment. Mm. Because I, there have been instances where the judiciary has actually acted independently mm -hmm. and those uh, laws mm -hmm. or those, uh, you know, decisions have been ignored mm -hmm. by the government. Yeah. So this three-way system yeah. may not really work for us in the long term. Somebody has to take precedence and I think it should be the judiciary. Yeah, and but uh, to do that, there has to be a strong and independent judiciary uh, there yeah, that don't get interfered with. First and foremost, yeah. First and foremost. yeah. Uh, but I think you know it's just like uh, I keep drawing the parallels between business. You have to. No, that, that's you what we want. To, you, have to, yeah. you have to hold people. Uh, you have to give them clear responsibility and hold them responsible for achieving their targets. They have their KPIs. They have their KPIs. Yeah. They have to hit them. That's it. Right. Which is unfortunate. It's it, and the thing is, uh, it's it's also pretty unfortunate. When you look at this cabinet reshuffle that actually yeah, happened. Same, same deck of cards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's uh, they have zero yeah. I mean, experience in that field of work or Absolutely. whatever. Someone who was the power and energy minister today yeah. becomes the education minister tomorrow. Absolutely. So it's just a change of uh, Sri seats. Sri That's why it's really important to have a strong layer of bureaucrats also yeah. running those, or technocrats running those. Uh, places because it's important to have experts in the field manning those places. Absolutely. You can't have 10,000 political appointees in exactly. there, you know, like Agreed. permanent Agreed. secretaries, for example. How many permanent secretaries are actually permanent? Every time there's a new uh, <laughs> yes. minister, <laughs> permanent, <laughs> 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 permanent, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, so bureaucracy ideally, also is like, you know, ideally, the bureaucracy should be running yeah. the country and these, the, the, the managers. It's like, say, for example, if I go to a plant. Yes, I'll be able to advise that most of the time I scream and say, make sure that you know, this is a, not clean or something else is messy. I don't try to tell them how to run the plant because that is their area of expertise. Right. Yeah. I can say when it's not being run properly and I shout if the KPIs are not right. 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 But that, that is my job to right. you know make sure that it's going in that direction. That is what the minister should be doing, not interfering and saying, I have a contract, then I have a contract. Right. Which is what happens now. Right. Yeah. right. Whereas, Whereas, I don't know, yes, minister and yes, prime minister on how, <laughs> because that is how a bureaucracy should be run. Right. Right. Because no matter who's in power, yeah. the they state mechanism yeah. does not yeah. fail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that is India's success. Yeah, you know, India has a very strong bureaucracy yeah. that sometimes runs, sometimes doesn't, but I think by and large works. Yeah. Right. And whoever comes on top and goes on top, this runs yeah. and it runs the country. And that is what we lack here as well. I mean, there are so many things that we lack. But, you know, let's, let's look at the positives here. Yeah. Right. Right. This is a problem we can put our arms around. Yeah. Right. It's not a massive, this country is not yeah. 100 million people That's and, true. you know, it's the size manageable, of, yeah. You know, it's it is. very manageable. Yeah. We need one strong visionary leader to just come in and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And people need to be patient to get things right because we will have to make sacrifices. Does it have to be a politician? That strong vision. No, it doesn't leader. have to be a politician. But how are, how is anybody else? Yeah, going because to, to, to have the, your our system doesn't yeah, allow exactly. it. Yeah? 
Because what you say has to be implemented. You have to, to come that. through yeah. that Kunumala and you yeah. know poke your head out on the top. You know, so it's, <laughs> yeah. otherwise it's not going to happen. I have friends who work very much with uh, you know um, people with HIV, sex workers. You know mm. Hans Billy Moria, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So ha so top what guy. Hans uh, mm. does is actually he uses the state mechanisms mm. in place because they are everywhere. Mm. Fortunately, mm. our that our systems mm. are very much in yeah. place. It's just that the right decisions are not being made. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, so fortunately, I think we can use the existing mechanisms and you know, if you make the right kind of policy that mm. trickles down to these places, this is it fixed. It will work. Yeah. yeah, It can easily mm. be fixed. It's just that you have to uh, want to do um, it. Um, That's cases. exactly yeah. my point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just about to say before we round up, yeah. so there is a yeah. section that doesn't want anything to happen. <laughs> there is a section that obviously, I mean, which is well, a larger enjoying, section. They're enjoying the status quo and they're enjoying, yeah, of course. you know, and they all feel very entitled. I mean, I've had dealings with certain ministries where we've been trying to build a hospital. Guess which ministry? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've been trying to build a hospital and we collected the money. We have the money. It's in a bank account losing yeah. value as we speak. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And because of a couple of bureaucrats in the in, in the legal team and a, uh, in a few people who wouldn't change a word here and there, yeah. that thing is still seated there. It's really. crazy it's, to actually note the fact that four, five, six years. Six now. years. Yeah. Six years. Yeah. Right? Six this years. was the cancer hospital. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. The first one we built. Yeah. Thankfully, that got yeah. done, uh, and that was surprisingly, yeah. it was uh, Maithi Palasir Sena who made it happen almost overnight right. because that was also dragging like this okay. oh, and wow. he just came and screamed and said make other Kerala then don't and <laughs> got done. Right. Yeah. So we need somebody like that, we still haven't found that person, this yeah. magic person who's going to come and wave the wand but <laughs> if you are building a five-story hospital, you are building a three-story hospital now because we, the money has lost so much value. Yeah. We have put a foundation up, everything is built, we have the money in hand the request is for the money to come to the ministry and they will build it. Right. <laughs> and what we have said is no chance, it's not going to happen. Right. We, will, we will pay on completion. So every time something is built, we yeah. will give the money. Right. Yeah. But right. it's not working. So even when the money is there to do something, yeah. if it doesn't work the, the way they want yeah. to, yeah. where they have control over the money, right. I wonder why that is, <laughs> uh, why that becomes such a priority. <laughs> But if they don't, it won't get done. So how do you work in a in an environment like that? How do you get anything done in an environment? How do you get anything done? How do you personally get anything done? Seriously, isn't it frustrating? <laughs> it is. You're running a business, yeah. you're running a yeah. company. Yeah. I mean, isn't it just frustrating for you when you have policies set yeah. out in your establishment? Yeah. Working like a charm, yeah. you step outside. It's absolute mayhem. Yeah. Before, before you ask, and that, even if you this point, yeah. have three minutes yes. more. Right. <laughs> yeah. okay. So even even in an environment like ours, you know, there are lots of examples of where things don't go right, but there are systems of how you deal with them, right? And then how you put it right, and right. then people answerable will take the responsibility and make it happen. Right. That is what we're lacking here. You know, we're lacking any kind of discipline in management. It is basically comes down to that. No leadership, no management. And the worst combination is arrogance with inability <laughs> and, and, and being unintelligent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, being stupidity. dumb and arrogant yeah, is a deadly combination. combination. <laughs> it's like having pressure and diabetes and cholesterol yeah, all combined. The worst thing is to think you're smart. <laughs> That's the problem with arrogance <laughs> and stupidity combined. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, I, so I, I, on that happy note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope yeah, there, no, there is hope. There certainly is hope, and I always yeah. you know, I refuse believe to believe that, yeah. that uh, no. things are as bleak as it's painted out to be. Of course, media organizations also love to kind of shove it down your throat. It's it's a horrible world to live in, according to the media. Yeah. But we know it's not the case. You know, there's yeah. still you know instance of humanity and humaneness all around us, and no problem is insurmountable, in my opinion. Of all the of all the chats and all the guests that we've had, this one of course was the was the happiest, <laughs> so to say. Happiest this fight was going about on. <laughs> most depressing subject. Exactly. Well, you've done such a great job. Uh, just before we go, we just got a, a minute left. Uh, we're going to quickly get back to the poll that we had for you this. Uh, I keep saying this morning. <laughs> Here we are. The poll today was, do you think the apparel industry in Sri Lanka will withstand the current crisis and help Sri Lanka come out of this? And you were supposed to WhatsApp your answers to our hotline 077-669-1590. What do you think, sorry? I'm bloody hoping they say yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need a job. Can I come and work here? <laughs> so let's have, the, let's have the answer. Uh, let's have... Uh, there we are. Wow. Okay. 83% firmly believe that the apparel industry in Sri Lanka Absolutely. will withstand the current crisis and help Sri Lanka come out of it. Absolutely. You know, and I'm, I'm really... I, I, 
firmly believe yeah. because despite the country's like yeah. mismanagement, mm. these entities, like not just MA, like mm. all of these entities are really, really well managed. So, yeah. you know, well done. Thank Karin, you very thank much, you so Sarish. Much. Thanks, thanks so much for being a part of the show. It was pleasure. wonderful as Absolutely. always. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, we will see you once again uh, tomorrow night at 9 p.m. with more great chat with wonderful individuals. Have yourself a great night. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.